In this video, I will compare manual color grading versus the Hansard plugin using DaVinci Resolve. All right, that's good. And this year, particularly, let's say the past 12 months, I started using DaVinci Resolve. I used to do all of my color grading for my series project, for my short films and everything with Adobe Premiere. But once I started using DaVinci Resolve, everything changed. It is truly the most efficient color grading software out there and I was avoiding it for a long time until I saw a friend of mine was working on some videos where he used the tracking and masking feature in DaVinci Resolve and I was blown away. I was like, I need to learn this. The color palette itself is very accurate and nowadays I would say most of the cinematographers use DaVinci Resolve to color grade their series projects. Now, don't get me wrong, I still use Adobe Premiere or color grading my videos on YouTube because I'm pretty fast when it's come to editing on Adobe Premiere compared to editing on DaVinci Resolve. I, it's something that I need to get used to it but I also hate jumping from one software to another just to color grade my videos so that's just another step. I still love color grading on Adobe Premiere but I think when it's come to advanced color grading Adobe Premiere is kind of limited. And when the Hansard reached out to me, which is a plugin that is designed for DaVinci Resolve, I thought it would be a great idea to compare manual color grading versus the Dehancer plugin, which is another way of color grading your videos. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I have this video of mine that was shot by Sony a7 III back in 2019. The video is recorded with a S-Log profile, which is the best and pretty much the only way to color grade your videos. As you might notice, I have two clips over the timeline. They are both the same and we will color grade the first one manually and the second one using the Dehancer plugin. Now let's jump to the color grading panel. Now this might look a bit complex in the beginning, especially if you've never used DaVinci, but trust me, you will get used to it just like any other software. To understand better, for example, we have layers in Photoshop, right? Now this box is pretty much the same. They represent layers and we can simply create as many layers as we want and apply different adjustments. Simply by holding option and press S on your keyboard or Alt and S if you're using Windows. By default, we will be in the curves and there are a bunch of sections to manipulate the colors using curves on your video. The first step of color grading is color correction and we will use curves by adding more contrast. Now, as you can see, the colors are corrected and the overall mood looks natural. Now we will create another box and I will do a little bit of color grading by going to RGB mixer and add a bit of blue in the green output to kind of get some greenish tones out there, play around a bit with primary wheels and I'll switch to lock. I would say this is kind of the main color wheel for grading. I'll also add some greenish tones to the highlight and a bit of yellowish to the shadows. All right, now it's time for masking and tracking. My favorite feature in DaVinci Resolve. And for that, we will create another layer. We will go to the window. As you can see, there are a variety of selections, but I will go with the circle one and select the model face. In order to get an accurate selection of the face, we will be using selection range in the qualifier section here. Here I will select the skin tone and to show what the hell is going on, check the magic brush icon. Oh yeah. Now here you might say, well, that's still not that accurate. Well, you're right. That's why we have Matt Finesse. Damn, that's such a cool name. I could call my son Matt Finesse. Finesse. Hey, what's up, Finesse? Anyway, that's out of our subject, but here we have a bunch of sliders. Main purpose of this slider is to make masking softer so it looks subtle when we apply any adjustment on top. Now after I finish playing with these sliders, I will go ahead and bump the brightness a bit using the curves. Overall, we will just add some brightness to the face. Now you might be wondering again, was all that selection for one frame? Well, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. No, that's why we have tracking, baby. Uh, we're gonna go to the last frame, adjust our selection, maybe tilt it a bit, 
and we will jump to the tracker section. Click on the reverse button icon. This will automatically track our selection for the whole damn video. And honestly, it's one of the most beautiful things that rarely happens in any video editing software. I just love how futuristic it is. Now I want to add some liner vignette to the right side of my video in order to bring more attention to my subject. So we will create another layer. This time I will choose square, adjust the size and make sure the edge are wide enough for a subtle result and I will go to curves and decrease the brightness. This is pretty much how I would color grade a video. Now I know it might not be too extreme, it's more like a natural color grading. I usually go with an extreme version a bit but obviously it depends on what kind of video I'm working with. For this one I think it's pretty reasonable but anyway here is the final result. All right, let's test the bad boy Dehancer. So before we use it, let me give you a brief description about it. Dehancer is a plugin that is suitable for film like color grading in DaVinci Resolve. Dozens of real photographic and motion pictures films precisely captured and packed in simple to use plugins with analog controls simulating real film behavior and effects. Now if that doesn't sound fancy, I don't know what it does. So we will create a new box as usual and once you install the Hanser plugin, you can simply drag and drop over the box. Here we have a couple sources. I usually like to choose my camera which is Sony a7 III. The format I'm using is HLG1. Here I'm going to bring down the exposure, scroll down a bit and here where the magic actually happens. Now let me tell you guys, here you have over 50 different color profiles, full range of current Kodak version, three negative movie films, and many more. We will try most of them in a bit, but before we do anything, make sure to check the auto expand to correct the exposure of your video. Honestly, I don't even know how they made this possible. It's just too complex for me. I read their blog and it kind of fucked my brain, so I will just leave their link below about how they made these profiles. Push and pull is basically the intensity of these profile colors. Expand is control controlling the whites and the blacks of the video. Print is mostly about the top basic adjustment. So here I'm just gonna bring down the tonal contrast a bit. Next, here we have a color head. Uh, I think it's a funny name, but I like it. This is a very similar tool like color reels. You can basically manipulate the colors in the shadows, midtones, and highlight. Now we get to my favorite part of all time, which is the film grain section. This is especially amazing for indie filmmakers. This is like, mm, so here's before enabling the grain, here is with the grain. Isn't it awesome? This is so cool, I know. I mean, there's this bunch of adjustment that you can actually play around with. So once you have the plugin, you can literally play around and do the adjustment the way you like. Next, we have halation. I literally had to Google it to know how to pronounce it. Anyway, this is a cool effect for night videos to get the reddish kind of film effect. In my case, we will not use it, obviously. Next, we have bloom. Again, a delightful effect for night videos to add some glows to the highlighted lights. And here we have vineyard as it exactly sounds it's there to add some black or white vignette to your videos. Next we have film breath. This is a cool tool that gives breath to the film, meaning a slight filmic movement to the video. Gate weave is pretty much the same thing, it's just another type of filmic movement to your video. Next we have false color. This can be helpful when you need to check overall exposure. It gives you a more complete picture of what is going on in the image by using a range of exposure values. Here we have output. If you think the overall look or the effect is too much, you can simply decrease the total impact. Last but not least, we have LUT generator. Honestly, it's an amazing option to have. If you like the look, you can simply generate the LUT and use it in different editing software. I don't think it would be possible to get the grain and other tools with it, but you will definitely get the color lookup table. All right, so this is pretty much it. Let's say if you want to copy this look to your other clips on your timeline, you can simply copy and then paste it over the next one. This is the final result. And this is the manual color grading versus the dehancer plugging. 
Thank you so much for watching. I forgot to mention that this video is not sponsored by a dehancer. It's more like a review and my honest opinion about it. My take after testing it for a month, if you are a beginner and have no background in filmmaking or color grading, plus you probably have a limited budget, it's probably better to wait. But if you're already in the filmmaking business and making money, it is totally worth it. This will step up your color grading game tremendously. So if you would be interested to get it, use the discount promo code K1 for 10% off. I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you would like to support my channel, check out my LUT collection. I will see you in the next one.